Hi everyone, welcome to this session. We are going to talk about the rise of G standard in Apache Spark 3.2. My name is Dong Jun Hyun. I'm Apache Spark PMC member and committer, and also have been contributing to Apache Oak and Leap project. In Spark community, I'm focusing on Spark SQL and Kubernetes area. Kubernetes become GA in Apache Spark 3.1 and G standard become more and more important in Kubernetes environment. My colleague Pangu will give you a brief introduction to G standard. Hi everyone. My name is Pangu. I'm a software engineer in Apple. I play two roles in my day-to-day -day job. As a big data engineer, I leverage big data to build pipeline that solve problem in maps. On the other hand, I also build tools and infrastructure to help other developers in a team to scale, that, scale up their work. And this is where Dong Jun's team and I work closely together to make sure we deliver the latest feature of Sparks to the developers. And also making sure the feedback from the real use case can be here to the community. So in this talk, we are trying to give the audience an overview of G standard on Spark ecosystem from both the perspective of a Spark developer and the user. So we will, here's the agenda. So we will start the introduction of G standard and then Dong Jun will talk a bit about the issues of G standard with the Spark integration and its history. And then I will talk about how to use the compression codec and in what scenario would best help you improve the efficiency. Then Dong Jun would talk about a little bit on the limitation and end the talk with the summary. So what is G standard? So G standard is a fast compression algorithm providing high compression ratio. So in Spark, we may already be familiar with multiple compression codec, for example, like LG4, which is by default used as the shuffle IO compression, um, and also Snappy, which is default used as the compression codec in Parquet. So these are all high throughput compression codec, which kind of focus on the speed of compression. We also have another set of compression codec, like GZIP, which focus on compression ratio. And G standard excels in such a way that it will give you the snappy-like compression speed, but also GZIP-like compression ratio. And it also offers a very wide range of speed and compression trade-off um, by allowing the user set compression level. So in the next slide, I'm going to hand over to Dong Jun to talk about the history of G standard Spark integration and the issues. Uh, many people try to use GSendart in the production. However, there are some issues. The first of all, Apache Hadoop GSendart codec requires Hadoop 2.9 or above. You cannot use it if your Hadoop version is lower than this. As you know, Apache Spark still provides user both Hadoop 2.7 and Hadoop 3.1 based distribution. In other words, Hadoop 2.7 based Spark distribution users are unable to use GSendart. So in addition, even with Hadoop 3, the user need to provide a custom Hadoop environment, specially built with the GSendart library. For example, the latest official Spark 3.1.1 distribution will throw exception when you try to use GSendart in the vanilla Kubernetes environment. To use GSendart without Hadoop codec limitation, we need to implement and use own G standard codec by using JNI library like G standard JNI or air compressor. Several Apache projects, including Spark, choose this way. Next issue, the performance. Although native G standard is fast, uh, there exists a Java virtual machine side overhead. So without a proper optimization, it shows relatively slow compression and decompression speed. So recently, we optimized Apache Spark, Apache Parquet, and Apache Abro by using recycling buffer pool. The improvements are impressive. As you see in the graph, 
the compression become faster up to 3.2 times and the decompression become faster up to 1.7 times. In addition, so efficient buffer management is important not only for the speed up, but also the memory consumption of core. So previously, we observed heavier memory consumption in G standard use case. For example, if you switch Spark's Shuffle IO codec compared uh, from LG4 to G standard, you may hit um kill the situation like this. We also optimized and improved garbage collection behavior recently in Apache Spark and April. The next issue is G standard J9 uh, inconsistency. The first, it means API incompatibility. To simply put, uh, G standard J9 library is not a driving replacement, even in a maintenance version upgrade. Apache Spark, Parquet, Abro, Kafka choose G standard J9 library in the same way. However, these are independent product project with different development speed. So consequently, they use different G standard J9 versions. In other words, if you replace G standard J9 jar file in Spark distribution, it may break Parquet, Abro, uh, Kafka functionality. We hit those issue and collaborate with upstream to resolve it. So in general, when it comes to JNI related library used by multiple projects, you should test it in all combination. Next issue is a performance inconsistency. So please note that we are talking about G standard JNI Java library instead of G standard library. The newer version may have a performance regression in some cases. Uh, for example, it happened when G standard JNI Java library introduced bufferful and redesigned it later. The buffer pool was added as a default at version 1.4.5 and reverted to no pool policy at version 1.4.7. As a user of this library, we may uh, we need to revise our usage to be consistent across Apache Spark versions and all the other Apache projects. To sum up, to mitigate this inconsistency or incompatibility, we collaborate with Apache Spark, Parquet, Abro, Kafka community and upgrade it to the same uh, 1.4.9 version consistently and improve their use cases. So let's take a look at the brief history in the project-wise perspective. The first, Apache Spark with GSendart. The Apache Spark added its first GSendart compression support at 2.3, three years ago but it was much slower than LG4 in general. 2.4 start to support Parquet G standard with a Hadoop 3.1 profile. However, it's difficult to use due to the issue I mentioned before. Spark 3 start to use G standard by default for map status broadcasting internally, and also split event load compression from shuffle compression. It enables GSendart uh, for event log without affecting other Spark operation. The Spark 3.1 upgrade GSendart to 1.4.8, the latest version. The second, Apache Parquet, Oak, and Abro with GSendart. All these projects' latest release are started to support GSendart by removing Hadoop codec requirement and also have the latest GSEN 1.4.9, and it optimized their Java uh, usage. Apache Spark 3.2 will deliver all these improvements on top of Spark itself GSEN improvements. So we addressed uh, all the previously mentioned issues and keep moving forward. To see the progress, please visit the umbrella Jira issue, Spark 34651. From now, Pang will talk about when and why and how to use G-Standard. So thank you, Dongjun. So in general, G-Standard could help in three places um, to improve efficiency. So the first place is um, the event log compression. So as in Spark 3, as Dongjun mentioned earlier, the, the Spark's event log compression could be configured separately uh, using spark.eventlog.compression ratio codec. So here we compare, uh, 
here we compress or uh, compare the size of event log against three different setup. So the first setup is we enable the event log, but without the event log compression setup set to true. This is the default setup. So in this case, event log will be write to external storage, which is configured by user either into the local file system or HDFS or S3 as text file. So in the first, in the second setup, uh, we enable the event log compression. So in this case, um, it will pick up the, the Spark IO shuffle IO compression codec as the compression codec of the event log. In, in, most, in this case, it's LZ4. And in the third setup, we enable the Spark uh, CSDD as the Spark event log compression codec. So as you can see from the result, so GSD standard is 3x smaller than LZ4 and 17x smaller than the raw text. The second aspect of G standard can help improve is the shuffle IO. So for large application, so C standard, uh, so for large, uh, so for application with large shuffle, C standard can not only can help reduce the IO cost significantly, it can also reduce the chance of hitting you know, the local disk uh, limitation. So uh, in many of the cloud, uh, in, in the cloud environment, you know, when user running Spark job, um, the, lo uh, the local disk limitation is pretty low. So in this case, C standard can help to improve the robustness of the job. So in our benchmark test, C standard yields 44% less data size, uh, shuffle write size comparing to LZ4. And also it consumes 43 less um, shuffle resize size comparing to LZ4 as well. And by the way, you can turn on C standard compression codec by specifying the Spark IO compression codec configuration. And also because of the reduced shuffle IO cost, uh, we also observe the query execution runs 15 to 20% faster in our benchmark test. And the larger the shuffle is, um, the more significant the save is. So this is also something we observe in our production jobs. So the last aspect C standard can excel is to use as a compression codec in a storage format. For example, like Apache Parquet. So in our benchmark test, C standards a file size generated by G standard compression codec is very similar to what GZIP has. It's even slightly uh, lesser. So, and also it, the data size generated by G standard compression is significantly smaller than Snappy and LZ4. So given the nature of uh, G standard has provided the user a wide range of uh, CPU compression speed and ratio choices and as well as a very stable and fast decoding speed. So the user can have, um, you, the user can choose the uh, different compression level based on the application scenario. For example, um, if they want to save the storage and they only, and the data only compress once, they can go for higher compression uh, level and vice versa. Also, when G standard used with um, Apache ORC format, it generates very similar um, data size than Parquet. It is uh, in our benchmark test, it actually it is slightly smaller um, than the Parquet file size in general. So here is the configuration. You, you can use um, for G standard in these three um, different file format. So in Parquet and Arrow, you can you know, um, select the codec um, 
by specifying you know, Spark SQL Parquet compression codec or Spark SQL Arrow compression codec. And in Parquet and Arrow, you can also specify different compression level as well as whether to use the buffer pool for compression. So in ORC, um, the compression level and the buffer pool is not yet implemented. So in the next slides, I will hand the presentation over to Dong Jun to talk about the limitation of the Z standard codex. Thank you, Pang. Yeah, there is uh, some limitation. So there is a hardware acceleration technique for Spark workload from the Intel or NVIDIA, but Z standard is not supported by CPU and GPU acceleration yet. And also Apache Oak is still using uh, G standard 1.3.5, it is using Avro. So uh, we can catch up that to latest G standard JNI library by replacing the air compressor. And also Apache Parquet has more room to optimize memory consumption. So there is a Parquet issue, Parquet 2022, and it is not released yet. But Apache Spark 3.2 uh, will uh, take a chance to bring this patch together. Uh, let's wrap up. The Apache Spark community is improving G standard more and more uh, for Apache Spark 3.2. The Apache Spark is revisiting G standard codec in various areas to maximize our cluster utilization. For event log, Apache Spark 3.2 start to use it by default. And for Kubernetes environment, you can use it to unblock the size limitation of local container storage. For the long-term storage, Apache Spark 3.2 support uh, in G standard in Parquet, Oak, and Avro without any limitation. Thank you.